going to open up a photograph here entitled birthday28.jpg which is actually a photograph of my sister Hayley on her birthday this year and if we zoom into the eyes we can see that unfortunately we've got a problem with red eye and it's affecting both eyes, the right far more than the left as it turns out and when I use the left and right expressions by the way I'm going to be talking about those relative to the camera just so we're on the same wavelength here now I'm going to come up here to the file menu and I'm going to select file info and under the heading of camera data 1 we're going to see something very interesting you can see that under the heading of flash we have an entry called red eye reduction meaning that the camera's red eye reduction feature was active when this photograph was taken I'm going to close the file info box so if the anti red eye feature was switched on then how comes we still get red eye in our photograph? Well, when anti red eye technology is turned on, you'll find the camera flashes twice when taking a photograph. The first flash is bright enough to cause the eye to protect itself against bright light, so the iris closes, causing the pupils to contract, which in turn reveals less of the retina at the back of the eye. The second flash is then fired as the photograph is taken. Now what could have happened here is that Haley could have blinked whilst the first flash was fired or she may have been looking away from the camera which would decrease the effectiveness of the first flash. And although you'll generally find red eye reduction to be fairly good you'll always get times when it doesn't quite work out the way you want it. And when that happens you'll need to be able to turn to Photoshop to repair the image. So let's take a look at how we can go about repairing the image right here inside of Photoshop. I'm going to zoom in here to the left eye first of all where we've not got too much of a problem and you can see that we've still got the iris intact which is the coloured part of the eye and we've also got the shadow and highlight information here on the pupil the only problem is that the pupil has turned a devilish red colour now I'm going to come over here to the tools palette and select the red eye removal tool which may be in a different location depending on what version of Photoshop you're running. Now this isn't the way I'd usually work but it is a great tool for a quick fix solution and I'll show you why. In the options bar we get two settings for this tool a pupil size and a darken amount and you'll generally find as a, a, a general kind of rule here that the default settings of 50% work pretty good. Now all I'm going to do here is click inside the eye and Photoshop gets rid of the redness automatically just like so. And this is working by desaturating the area and then darkening it off with something like the burn tool which is just how we used to get rid of red eye inside of Photoshop before the red eye removal tool. Ok I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that modification and move over to the right eye where we have a different kind of problem and this time the red eye as we can see has affected not just the pupil but the iris as well so we're going to go ahead and fix the coloured iris as well this time I'm going to start off by creating a new layer by clicking the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette then I'm going to name it right eye so we know which adjustment this is then I'm just going to make sure I can see both eyes in the window and then select the colour picker by clicking the foreground colour swatch at the bottom of the tools palette. Now I'm going to go ahead and select a green that roughly matches the colour of Haley's eyes and if you feel you're going to stray a fair bit from the colour you need then always err on the side of a deeper colour and we can blend that in a bit later on. I'm going to click OK to accept this colour and then I'm going to zoom in to get a better view of the eye. Now I'm going to select the brush tool and find the correct size for the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard and we can also change the hardness of the brush by holding down the shift key whilst pressing the bracket keys and I'm going to aim to get the brush around about a quarter of the diameter of the eye and slightly soft and if you'd rather not use the keyboard shortcuts then you can change the brush settings up here by clicking on this little arrow and then you've got all your various settings inside this dialog box OK, we're all set. I'm going to start painting away on the eye, just trying to keep as accurate as I can. And don't worry about the highlights in the middle. We're just going to paint over the entire thing at the moment. And that looks pretty good. 
Now for the final touch, I'm going to change the blend mode of the layer from normal over here in the layers palette to color, which is going to maintain the hue and saturation values of the paint we've added, but mix them with the luminosity values of the original photograph, which you can see gives us a very realistic effect. Now I'm just going to zoom in, or out I should say, to see both eyes together and then just lower the opacity of the right eye until it starts matching the iris of the original eye and just about there looks pretty good okay so let's go back to the left eye and take another look at that I'm gonna create another layer in the layers palette and rename it left eye now I've still got the brush selected so I'm going to zoom into the left eye and start painting away on the eyeball once again. There's no need to go into the iris this time by the way because that's already looking fine, we've got no redness in that section of the photo. Ok so once again I'm going to zoom out a touch and change the blend mode of the layer to colour and then I'm going to lower the opacity until we lose the green tinge. And if we start getting traces of redness again, then we know we've gone too far. Somewhere in between is going to be just about right. Okay, just to finish things off, if we wanted to darken the pupils just a little bit more, we could duplicate the background layer over here in the layers palette, and then just grab the burn tool from over here in the tools palette, make sure that our burning is set to mid-tones, and that we can afford to raise the exposure by something like around 50% which is usually pretty high and then just brush away once or twice in the pupil to darken things up and that's looking pretty good okay I'm gonna zoom out of this image once again and I'm going to alt delete the background layer to show you the original image and then click again to show you the repaired image so I'm going to zoom in a bit here so we can see better what's going on and I'm going to click to see before and after so once again take a look at the difference this is before and this is after well I hope you found this tutorial on freephotoshop.com to be helpful thanks very much for watching